So Paul, all right, we just saw what happens if you're in what we call low Earth orbit. You're going really fast, and depending on your angle, your inclination, you can cover different parts of the Earth at different times. But what happens if we go further out? Because we were only talking about 800 kilometers before. Yeah, so if you want to be as close as possible to the Earth, which might be if you want to use a small communication device or you want to spy on things. Yep. But it's got the drawback, first of all, you're moving very fast, you're not over one place very long, and uh, you can't see very much of the Earth from any given place. That's right. But you might want to go further out. So here, for example, I've put an orbit 10,000 kilometers out. Okay. So we're much further away now in low Earth <laughs> orbit, but we're still orbiting around the Earth. That's right, and I've inclined this one at 30 degrees again, um, just as an example. Yep. And now you're going around the Earth much more slowly. Yep. It might now take you two or three hours to go around the Earth. Okay. Your speed is not as great. You're further out though, which means you can see more of the Earth at any one time. And you can see more of the same part of the Earth for longer, because you're not going over it as quick. Yeah, so now if we look at the tracks for this, you're going much more slowly. Okay. So you uh, have much more time to observe a particular place. You yep. go over it slowly, but then it might take longer before you come back to it. That's true, because it's going to take longer for that orbit to come around. But you're also, as you said, you're going to be further away, so you may not have as much detail or sensitivity, but you're still seeing more of the Earth or whatever you're looking at. Yep. Now these orbits are not very much used, because... Generally speaking, you want to see more detail. If you are going to stand back so you can see more of the Earth, what you're actually going to do is pick a very special orbit yep. called a geostationary orbit. Or geo, just as much as we yes. have Leo. Yes. So the idea here is that um, no matter what orbit you're in, you still have to move. Yep. But if you're far enough away, you can move so slowly that it takes you a full 24 hours to go around the world, rather than just 90 minutes. So here's a geostationary orbit yep. over the equator, and it's going the same direction as the Earth. Yep. And what you can see is, because it takes 24 hours to go around, and the Earth also takes 24 hours to go around, you're always looking at the same side of the Earth. So this is going to have a very different benefit from, say, that low Earth orbit, right? You're going to end up staring at the same spot continuously. Yeah, let's try this. So let's, okay. uh, let's imagine you're the Earth and you yep. stand in the middle here yep. and um, let's say you're going to spin very slowly and I'm going to be a satellite. Now if I'm in low Earth orbit I'm going to be running all the way around here much faster so I now see your back and now I see your front. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're getting a little tired at the same time. <laughs> okay. It takes a lot of energy to do low Earth But now orbit. let's keep going and now I'm a bit further away so I'm going more slowly. So now I can uh, look at your beautiful face. All the time, as All much the as time. you want. You never I'm still going in a then. circle, but because I'm further away, I'm going at the same speed that you're rotating, so I'm always looking at the same side. So it's kind of like the ultimate in terms of tangoing, right? You're always kind of facing your partner here. That's right. And the benefit of this is, well, many forward. I mean, one yep. advantage is you can just look at the same side over and over again. So a lot of weather satellites exactly. will do this trying to look for you cyclones, and they're quite big. You don't need your 10 centimeter resolution. Yep. Um, you can see that even from this enormous distance. You're not going to see detail. You're not going to read newspaper print from there. Exactly. We'll talk about this later in the space That's course. Right. But uh, it, you can look at the same time over and over again, which is great for consistent, say, weather observations. Exactly. It's also really useful for communication, because from the Earth, spacecraft will be like there, and it will always be there. Instead of being there, and then there, and then there, and then there, and then there. Yeah, but lower thought, but you can and then it goes again. Whereas this one will always be in the same place, which means your ground dish to communicate with a satellite can be much simpler. Exactly. You can just concrete it in. That's right. It's always going to point in the same direction. Whereas if you've got something in lower thought, you're going to have to track it across the sky. And, have and then you probably have multiple of them, as we'll talk about as it goes around. So it's definitely a different trade-off. We won't see as much detail or be as sensitive, but we'll get to see essentially more area, half the Earth, all the time. Yeah, not quite half the Earth. If you yeah. want to get all the Earth, you need three satellites That's in right. geostationary orbit. A lot of the weather satellites are like this that have three of them, um, each of which can observe like you know, 40% of the Earth. So between them, they can overlap. It's That's still going right. to be very hard to see what's exactly at the poles. None of you are going to go look, but there aren't many people who live there, so they may not worry too much about the lack <laughs> of good weather forecasts or communications. So now, in order for this all to work, 
how do we put it? Is there just a certain range we can put it, or is there a certain orbit we have to put it at? So for geostationary, it has to be the right distance out, 36,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface, going at the correct speed, so it goes around once every 24 hours. So it's a, it's a, a, a ring around the Earth. It's very narrow. Low Earth orbit, you can go in any direction you like. That's right. But this has to be over the equator. If it was any other angle, you'd still go around every 24 hours, but now you'd be... So what you, what you look is like going up and then going down and going up and going down. That's right. Or if you're going a little bit closer, you're actually going not quite 24 hours or you're going too long and the Earth yeah. is actually moving more than you. Yes. So in practice, most satellites are either in a low Earth orbit or in a geostationary orbit. These are the crowded bits of space. Everything in between. I and mean, there are some satellites there, there that are. use these things for various purposes, but you're probably 90% of commercial satellites and Earth observation and spy satellites are in either a low Earth orbit or a geostationary orbit.